Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. In this video, I'm going to be going through the International A-Level Pure Mathematics P4 paper from January 2021, the Edexcel International A-Level paper. And this question, this uh, paper, I'm going to go through paper uh, question by question, and I'll collect them together in one playlist. In that playlist, the description um, of the playlist will have the PDF for this paper. So if you want to take paper before see how you did you can go to the playlist of this paper go to the description and you can click on the link there a link to the playlist is at the description of this video and also at the top of the video at the end you'll see a link appearing at the top somewhere at the end of the video taking you to that playlist now question number one binomial expansion it says find the first four terms in ascending powers of x of the binomial expansion of a quarter minus 5x to the power of a half. They've told us the modulus of x has to be less than 20 for this to be valid expansion. And we've got to give each coefficient in its simplest form. Now, in P2, we learn about how to use the NCR method. The NCR method. And we have this, you know, this calculator button that we have, which you can use. Um, it looks like that, the button. And we use N and r and whatever and we get the co some of the coefficients that we need it gives us part of the coefficient of each term now the ncr button doesn't work when we have fractions as powers or we have negative integer powers therefore we can't use the ncr button and we are forced to use the formula okay which it's quite easy for you to know the formula but the formula is in the formula book and i'm going to bring it here this is the formula from the formula book for p4 um, binomial series and that's what we're going to use to um, expand this bracket up to the first four terms now if you notice the formula it has 1 plus x to the power of n and this is like a quarter minus 5x to the power of a half what must happen is there must be a number here which is a 1 here's a quarter here we need, we need to become a 1 here right and this is a quarter so we have to basically if we take this a quarter minus 5 over sorry 5x quarter minus 5x to the power of a half we what we have to do is we have to take out a quarter so you're left with a one here there has to be a one here so I'm going to keep this in a bracket because it's all to the power of a half. So we have a quarter, and I've taken out the one, so I've got to also take out a quarter from here, right? So I want to, I have to, what I have to do here is this. I, if, I, if I want this to become a 5, I have to multiply this by a 20. This is going to be a 20x, okay? Because um, a quarter times minus 20x gives me 5. I basically have to divide this by whatever I took out. Okay, so I had to divide this by a quarter because I took out a quarter. So if I divide this by a quarter, I'm going to get 20. If I expand this thing now, I'm going to get a quarter minus 5x is what I want. That's exactly what we started with. And all of that is to the power of a, of a half. Okay, so this gives me a quarter to the power of a half times 1 minus 20x to the power of a half. So that helps me to get things in the right format okay I need to have 1 plus x to the power of n it doesn't matter if it's a plus or minus it just has to be a 1 here okay that has to be a 1 here and that's what exactly what I've got now a quarter to the power of a half actually means a quarter square rooted and the square root of a quarter is a half so that's a half times then I have my bracket 1 minus 20x to the power of a half. Now I'm ready to start um, expanding, okay, using this pattern here. So the pattern says, states, you're going to have, I'll, I'll write it here, a half times, and then I'm going to have, let me just, uh, a half times, and then I'm going to expand this according to this pattern. I've got one, that's going to be a one, plus n, which is a half, times x, which is x is the whole of this term it's just not just x x in this formula means this whole term here so it's a minus 20x okay because that x here 
that x here is the same as this when you've got a 1 in that place okay it's the same as that so that's 1 plus nx that's the first term the second term we've got the third term now which is plus n now n is a half n minus 1 is minus a half so n times n minus 1 over 1 times 2 times x which is our 20 x minus 20 x here squared and with one more term to do we just follow the same pattern n times n minus 1 so 1 a half times minus a half times um, another n minus 2 which is going to be minus a half times uh, sorry minus a half minus another one which is minus 3 over 2 over 1 times 2 times 3 this is basically 3 factorial times now this minus 20x cubed okay so that's as far as we need to go one two three four terms okay so we're going to have here a half times and this is going to be one minus 10x now you're going to have a half times minus a half times plus 20 so it's going to be a it's going to be a minus term here because you have a half times a minus a half which is negative and that's going to become positive so it's negative that's uh, 1 over 8 because a half times a half is minus a quarter minus a quarter divided by 2 is minus 1 over 8 and that's going to give me 40 400 sorry x squared 20 squared is 400 so it's minus 20 squared is going to be plus 400 x squared and the last term here you're going to have um, the 3 cancelling with the 3 first you've got minus times minus times minus which will be plus which will be minus again sorry minus times minus gives you plus this will be cubed so a negative number cubed will be negative so this is again going to be negative so you'll have here um, a half times a half times a half which is 1 over 8 1 over 8 divided by 2 is 1 over 16 and you got 20 cubed which is going to be 8 and you're going to have three zeros okay because you have 20 times 20 times 20 Two, two, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 and 3 zeros that's 20x cubed and that's as far as we need to go and now we can just simplify this this is going to be let's just simplify what's inside first 1 minus 10x okay and that's going to become minus 200x squared over uh, 4 I've just simplified that in fact you can simplify more because 4 goes into both of those so you have minus 100 over, in fact, 8 goes into both of those. You can simplify even more. 8 goes into 400. Um, 8 goes into 8 one time. So I can simplify even more. So 8 goes into uh, 45 times. And you've got 50. 50 times 8 is 400. So that's minus 50x squared. And 16 goes into 8,000. Well, 60 goes in, 16 goes into 8 five times so that's going to be 500 so minus 500 x cubed okay let me just confirm that just in case 8000 divided by 16 gives me 500 that's right and now all of them i can multiply by a half so it's a half minus 5x minus 25x squared minus 250 x cubed plus dot 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 and there's the answer to part A of this question, where we had to expand this, giving each coefficient in its simplest form. Okay, so there's the answer to part A. Um, now I'm going to go on to part B. Okay, now for part B, it says by substituting x equals 1 over 100 into the answer for part A, which is written here, find an approximation for the square root of 5, giving you answers in the form A over B, where A and B are integers to be found. Okay, so first of all, what we should realize is that the number they gave us to substitute is a valid number to put into this expansion because whatever we put into this expansion its magnitude must be less than 1 over 20 and this is less than 1 over 20 okay and there's a reason for that and i'll just quickly go through it i've mentioned it in more detail later um it's basically is the number that goes into this part when we expand the number that goes into this section here when we expand this section here this number is the number that's going to be raised to different powers. It's going to be increasing power. So 
It's going to be raised to the power of one, raised to the power of two, raised to the power of three, four, five, six, seven. This is going to be, this is an infinite expansion. It never ends. Or there will never be any place where you'll have a zero here because you're going to have n times n minus one. If that's, an, if that's not a positive integer, you'll never get to zero. So this goes on forever and ever and ever. It never, never ends. So that you're going to have th this thing raised to the power of two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven. Now, if the value of this number here is basically less than one, it, all right, just say it's greater than one. Supposing the value of this number here is greater than one. Supposing this is like, um, its value is two. Then it's, it's going to have, you're going to multiply this by two, then by four, then by eight, then by 16, then by, you know, you're going to keep on increasing what you have to um, uh, multiply each term by. And the value of this expansion will, will get, get really, really big. All right, it will keep increasing and increasing. And I won't be able to stop it anywhere and say this is almost the same as that. But if the value of this this uh, term minus 20x, if its magnitude is less than one, say it's a half, then it's going to be like a half, then a quarter, then an eighth, then a sixteenth, then one over 32, then one over 64. It's going to get so small eventually that it won't make a difference to the value of this expansion. So the magnitude of minus 20x, whatever goes in here, must be less than one. And if that's the case, that means t the magnitude of 20x is less than one, which means 20 times the magnitude of x is less than 1, which means the magnitude of x is less than 1 over 20. So that is a condition for this to be a valid expansion. That's what that means there. And so this is the condition that we have for this to be a valid expansion. So that they've told us to substitute 1 over 100 into this expression here to find an approximation for root 5. So I'm going to take this bracket first, and I'm going to replace the x with 1 over 100. Okay, and understand that this this means the square root of. So what this is going to be, this is going to be the square root of a quarter minus, now 5 over 100 is like 1 over 20. So this is the square root of, this is like, um, make them the same denominator, 20 over 20, well, sorry, not 20 over 20, that's 5 over 20 minus 1 over 20, that gives us 4 over 20. Okay, 4 over 20, the square root of 4 over 20, which is 1 fifth, 1 over 5. Okay, so this is the same as the square root of 1 fifth. Okay, now, this is this, the same as 1 over the square root of 5. If I rationalize this, I'm going to get root 5 over root 5. So it'll be root 5 t over 5. Okay, root 5 over 5. So that's what you'd get if I put a quarter minus 5 over 100 under the square root, it will give me root 5 over 5. So I know that this bracket is the same as root 5 over 5. So I can say root 5 over 5. That bracket, when I put x equals 100 in it, gives me root 5 over 5. And that's equal to this, which is a half minus 5 times, and remember we're putting x as 1 over 100, and minus 25 times 1 over 100 squared, minus 250 times 1 over 100 cubed. Okay, so we can see here that root 5 is going to be 5 times all of this. Okay, so I can work out what all of that is, just to get my calculator. So I have a half minus 5 over 100 minus, whoops, not, my, not plus, minus 25 Oops, what have I done? Sorry, I'm sorry. That's a half. My, be careful about how you use the calculator. Times 5 times, 5 times 1 over 100. One hundred minus, and you've got 25 times, you're going to have 1 over 100 squared. So it's 100 and then another two zeros. Okay, and you're gonna have minus, and it's gonna be 250, 250 times, and you're gonna have one million, one millionth, one over, and you're gonna have 100 cubed, so that's 100, and then you're gonna have another two zeros and another two zeros, so six zeros. That's one million, one, two, three, four, five, six, and that gives us 1,789 over 4,000, 1,789 over 4,000, and I have to 
multiply that by 5, multiplied by 5, that gives me 1,789 over 1,789 over 800, okay, and we have to give our answer, okay, as A over B, where A and B are integers to be found, so there's the answer, you can say root 5 is equal to 1,789 divided by 800, and if you're not sure whether we've done the answer, we've made a mistake, what you can do is, you can find out the value of this, which is 2.235, 2.23625, 2.23625, okay? So this is approximation, by the way, it's not equal, it's approximately. So we can now find what the square root of 5 actually is, using our calculator, and we can see that it's actually very close, 2.236067, so 2.36, so it's the same up to the third decimal place. So we can kind of rest assured that we didn't make a mistake anywhere and like did some calculation errors. If root 5 and this what we get are almost the same, then we, we can be pretty sure that we've got those marks. Okay, so there's the answer for question number one, A and B. Um, other questions from this particular paper you can find in the playlist, which will be in the link you'll find over here on the left. Other questions from binomial expansion you can find in the link over here. Um, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link here and on the top of the page you can um, find a link to another P4, P4 paper that you might want to watch. Thank you for watching and see you soon.